Yeah. It's impressive. Thank you. I wish I could do that. I bet you can. Hopefully you could do it yourself, though. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty amazing. I believe you can. But be careful. Because my mom used to always tell me, like, Jonathan, you better be careful with your neck and your eye rolling and all that bullshit you be creating. <laughs> and I was like, Mom, I do it on purpose. And she was like, just don't do it because, God forbid, your neck gets stuck, stuck Jonathan, like that. Where, where are you from originally? Where'd you grow up? Origin, um, um, I forget, but um, I grew up in East LA one time. One moment before I grew up, before, one moment before I grew up, grew up in East LA, East Los Angeles, and that means Los Angeles, Los. Angelitos in Spanish, but in English, the angels are living in, on the east side, in the most beautiful town of a, our angels. Live. Tell me about your family. You had mom and dad? It's part of Egypt. Um, mom and dad, um, my dad, um, I believe he's still alive. Um, He's not a good dad. I don't, I don't like mentioning anything of him, but um, I will for you, Mr. Mark. Um, King Mark. My dad used to abuse me, uh, but uh, my mother. You were closer. He always protected me. And you were closer to your mom. Claudia. Yes, she passed away at 53 years young. I can barely hear you, Jonathan. Uh, my mother had passed away at 53 years, 53 years young. Yes. How old were you when you lost your mom? I was 22. 22. How old are you now? I'm 26. Mm, I'm sorry. Thank you. How would you describe your childhood in general? I'll be okay. Um, my childhood, I'm still going through it. As a 26-year-old man, I'm still going through the trauma that I've been through as a child. So I'm still going through the childhood trauma that I'm still going through today. I'm sorry? I'm still going through the childhood camp, uh, trauma that I'm going through today. It's childhood trauma for everybody, and, and but first myself and for my family and my friends. Yeah, I can barely hear you, Jonathan. Um, what, what were some of the struggles you had as a child? Were they, were they, were they with your, fa your family? Yes, um, my mom, not my mom, not my sisters. Um, some of my sisters um, didn't understand um, me very well, but um, my mom um, was a great person, and she still remains to be the great royalty, high queen, holy and holiness to the Holy Trinity and my Father God. In heaven. Jonathan, I really can't hear you. She fried down on earth, um, and he did fry down on earth. Excuse me. Um, my mom was a great mom. Um, my father wasn't great at all. There was some abuse, I assume, in your childhood? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. From, from your dad's side? Yes, sir. From me and my little sister, Natalie Portado. My name is Jonathan Michael Corrado. I'm sorry? My name is Jonathan Michael Corrado, and, and my sister's name, my little sister's name, were two years apart. And so she's 24 today, I'm 26 today. And she um, was abused while we were playing toys as children and kids and kidding children, playing um, Our, our toys and playing with our, with our beautiful kids and children's toys from Toys R Us. And um, my father one time walked into the room, which is a bathroom, restroom, bathroom, bathroom actually, which is a restroom too as well. And, um, and um, is, which is a bathroom and a restroom too as well. And, sorry, sorry. Um, and um, he asked me 
he asked my sister to turn uh, he asked my sister and me to stop playing with toys and to get up and we both got up and we both got up and I was like my sister was like what are you doing daddy and my dad was like Shut the fuck up. You know what I'm here for, you stupid little bitch. My mom was crying in the room. She was letting it happen because she couldn't let him. She didn't want him to do it. The abuse, the childhood, child molesting abuse. Excuse me, sir. And my mom turned around and she was like this on the bed and she was praying and crying. She was praying and crying. She said, please don't hurt my children. She said, please don't hurt my children. Rene Vidal Cordava, Rene Vidal Cordava, please don't hurt my children. She loved them so much. And she was still quiet while she was praying. Because he forced her to shut the fuck up, you little bitch. You know, wife, right? She's like, yes, I need to, I don't need to be quiet and I am I'm fighting for them. Like, what? One day my son will fight for them. And I still am fighting for the children and all the kids, all, all kids and all the children I'm still fighting for. That's 42,000 of us around the world. And, um, Dad kept her quiet, so uh, she started praying and she started crying after she was quiet. She started praying and then she was quiet. <laughs> and um, my dad went running, like he was running, but he was like walking very, very nasty, evil, evil nasty walk he had, very strong, evil, nasty walk he had. And um, we were both scared when he walked in the room because he told us to get up and stop playing from with the toys. And he told me to look. I was like this, and I got up. I was playing with toys on the, uh, excuse me, I was playing with the tubs on the, uh, toys on the tub like that. And um, not like video games, God forbid, but um, to tell the truth, I was just playing Toys R Us games. My sister, we were playing like, like, like Ariel, Little, Little Mermaid Ariel, and I was like, we should play, I was like telling her, I was like, we should play the Little Mermaid Ariel. How she swims, Natalie. You remember how she swims? Yeah, I'll teach you. And then she was like, no, I, I just want to play with my toys right now. I was like, okay. And then we started playing with our toys with each other because I said, that's okay. And, and after I said, that's okay, she understood me. And I understood her first as well. Both of us understood each other first. And then our dad walked into the room and we got scared. We heard like an evil walk, walking towards us, God forbid, walking towards us to the room, the restroom. And we got up after he asked us nice, for, actually not nicely, but very evil, very evil talk he was having with us. And he was nasty by asking us very, very nasty evilness to get up and stop playing with their toys. Stop playing with your toys, stupid bitches. You guys don't know. Jonathan doesn't know shit. He's chicken shit. He doesn't know shit. You're not a young lady. You better get up right now, stupid bitch. He told her that. And we both, that's when we both stood up. And, and I was like, she asked first, she was like, Daddy, what, what's wrong? And she was like, and he was like, shut up, you fucking bitch. You, you know what I'm going to do to you next. And then he turned around at me on his, on his right side. He turned around to his right side, and I was on my sister's left side. And this was her right side. As a king, I was standing on, on her left, and, and um, my queen sister was standing on my right. And um, my dad asked us, he asked me actually, then second, and actually first he asked me, and he asked me, stupid little, stupid jo Jonathan, turn the fuck around, I was like, 
why daddy why and he was like turn the fuck around right now stupid ass motherfucker stupid ass shithead or I'm gonna hurt you and I was like okay and I turn around and I turn around this way towards the wall and the walls on that side of me and the walls right here on the side of us both and the wall was on this side excuse me on this side for her of the tub the bathtub and um and I start, and he was like, stand there, stare at the wall, don't look at us, don't even stare at us, don't look back. And I looked back, and I was like, turn around or I'll hurt you. And I, I was like, okay. And I kept on smiling, because my mom was praying, and she was telling us to smile, always smile. She told me through a prayer, always smile, Jonathan, because I'll keep you stronger. As a child, I was keeping strong. As a king, a child. I was staying strong for my sister and my mom first, both first. All sisters were both first. Which was my mom and my sister. And I kept smiling and I was like, smiling and smiling. And I was just like, you know, singing like something in my head I can't remember. It was beautiful. I guess it was a Little Mermaid song. So my mom said it was a Little Mermaid song it's just now. God forbid. And um, I was smiling and I was singing the Little Mermaid songs and I was just like quiet. But in my brain I was singing the lovely, most lovely songs from the heart. And to my brain was light. And from my heart, giving love from Jesus Christ, I was uh, singing that love my heart to my brain which is of light first love and light love and then light love and light um, so. Jonathan I can't I can't hear a word you're saying um, and then uh, he abused my my young sister second uh, after I was smiling and turning around this way and I was singing the Little Mermaid song, I, turned, uh, I didn't turn around, I was faced that way the whole time because uh, I was forced to by my, fr my father, Rene Vidal Guardado. And um, he's a Salvadorian and I don't like him at all. A lot of Salvadorian people are very, very nasty to the curses and demonic possessions they put themselves through. Um, he was abusing my sister and he was like, don't look at me. Don't look at me. And she was like, daddy, I don't want this right now. He was like, and you're gonna enjoy it. And no, it's not right. She was under witchcraft too at the age. She was three years old. Maybe five. In the moment before. The time before I was five and she was three years young. She was three years young and I was five years old. And I couldn't even see what he was doing to her at one time. When I was a child, I couldn't even see what he was doing to her as a child. I, I can't yeah. hear you at all. I couldn't see my father do what she was doing, uh, what he was doing to my child. Excuse me. Um, I couldn't see, as a king, I cannot see from before as a child, when I was five years young, my dad, Rene Vidal Guardado, Vidal, Rene Vidal Guardado, Want to be king, abusing my sister, queen, at three years young. He's a child molester and he abuses children all around the world. Like, uh, like if he wants to be all around the world, but um, he abused my sister and, and the witchcraft he put her through was demonic and devilish. But not today, God bless you, sister. 
because I, I still pray for her no matter what. And she and, and through that vision, she couldn't even see anything. The only thing that she saw was nasty, evil, demonic devils and demons that were coming for her and they were like, surrender to us and like, bow down your head to us and we'll give you what you want. And she was like, daddy, daddy, I can't see it all right now. She said that. My mom just told me that she said that. And she still kept crying. My mom still kept crying for us. And my sister was crying too. <sighs> my sister couldn't see anything but demons and devils at the time. When she was only three years young. Because my dad put witchcraft on her when she was three months years old as a newborn baby in my mom's womb. And um, I forgot how it was over. I forgot how it was over. Actually, I remember now. Thank you, Mom, and thank you, uh, Mom. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Mom, for making me remember. They're both in heaven, in heaven. They're both angels in, in heaven. And um, yes, I believe that. Um, he, uh, no worries. Um, he washed it away with his witchcraft and then um, my sister was crying and she was just quiet and she was she was like this, she was like this, she was like she was quiet and she was asking for help and I couldn't even see her when he pulled me out the the bathtub first. And that's why I couldn't even see my sister because I was I was happy as a five year old young king man in childhood, in my childhood. He made me forget how it happened through the witchcraft by pulling me out out of the corner. It was over, the abuse was over, and he pulled me out the tub first. He, he pulled me out and he was like this. And he put me down like very nasty afterwards, the second time. He did not like my mother at all. He didn't. My mother loved him so much. He started, he grabbed me with a towel and, and then you know, my sister came out by herself. My young three-year-old sister came out by herself out of the tub. And he went <clears throat> over my, my body with a towel, with a, it was a grayish towel. I call mercury today and I don't like it at all. I never loved mercury at all for anybody including myself or any of my family and friends. But um, he wrapped me around the towel and then he looked down and, and my sister, she looked away for a second and she kept on looking back because she knew that he was wrong. My father was wrong. And um, he grabbed my, my childhood I really was before I knew ever what happened at the childhood that I had, as five years young as a childhood I had with my three-year-old young child sister, which is a queen today, and still forever a queen, um, and was before a queen too as well, at three years young. Um, he started massaging my He's like, it feels good, right? And I was like, yeah. And then he, uh, 
he didn't he, he didn't dry my sister at all with the towel. He tries to make me think that I that he he dried my sister with a towel, but uh, he did not. She came out by the tub herself, and I came out the the restroom with a tub. And um, I was so happy and I was smiling, and then my sister was left behind in the restroom. And um, my dad's really horrible. He's not even my dad. We both believe that he's not my dad. He's not even our father. He's nothing to us anymore. That's why he hurts us all. He hurt all the people thinking that I'm a liar. But I thank you for believing and telling the truth, Mr. Mark. Sir Mark. Mr. King Mark. I can barely hear you, Jonathan. I'm sorry. Mr. King. Sir King Mark. Thank you for believing in me at all times, in all moments, no matter what. There was just moments that I was needing better of a job to, to tell my story. and. Have you ever told anybody this before? No. Never. This is my very first time, to be very honest with you. It's got to be difficult for you to speak about. You did a good job. But I'm still not done yet for all the children around the world, including myself. Not first, but for everybody. First, for everybody, and that's including me. T tell me about your life today. You're, you're down here on Skid Row. Where, do you stay down here? Yes, I do. Do you have a, stay in a room or a tent? I stay with a best friend of mine. And his name is Mr. Brian. Sir Brian, Sir King Brian. Sir King Brian, his name is. It's nice you have somebody that kind of helps you out like that. Yes. Are, are drugs a part of your life? Yes, they are. Crystal meth? Crystal meth. Crack. Churn. Marijuana. Um, do you mind if I show you something on my chest? Sure. I got shot one time. And I was in, a, in USC Medical Hospital, you know where that's at? Mm -hmm. On Mission Road, over yeah. there in East Los Angeles. Sure. Yes. Who shot you? It was somebody ugly. His name was Six. And he, um, the rest of his, you know, want to be gangsters, but, uh, yeah, he, He shot me. It was sent by a devilish demonic demon, which his name is Oscar Robbins. Oscar Roberts. No, Oscar Robbins is his name. And he and he sent everybody to get me all the drugs that I mentioned, which was sherm, marijuana, alcohol, crystal, crack. Um, chemicals, um, bath salts within crystal, or crack, and all the other drugs, and alcohol um, was was faced with crystal and bath salts, and he sent some people to protect me, supposedly, um, that didn't want to do it at all, but they had to because they were forced to as well, as young adults in this lifetime.
I, uh, I've been fed and I've been fed um, human meat when I was sleeping in people's tents. That's why I've been mentioning cannibalism a lot lately. <laughs> because they were feeding me um, meat that came from bodies that they killed. And they thought that I could kill, but I just can't. It's not my right to kill anybody here on earth that's been given from heaven by Jesus Christ, but everybody, the people here, were brought from Jesus Christ, from heaven. Do you know what caliber, our, do you know what caliber bullet that was? No. I don't even, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. How long were you in the hospital? Do you know? How long were you in the hospital? I was in the hospital for almost three weeks. It was two and a half weeks, almost three weeks. And I was asking for my dad. I was like, Dad, Daddy, in my, I call it insidious dream today because it was an insidious dream for a week and two days. I was kept slept in my coma for a week after the shot that's been given to me my chest for a week and two, a week and two days, sorry. I didn't have any vision. I didn't have anybody to help me in the vision of my spiritual insidious vision. I didn't have... I didn't have nobody. I was asking for my dad, my dad. I was like, Daddy, Daddy. I was like, Father, Father. I was like, please help me. You know, I was actually like, Dad, please help me. Help me, Father, Father. It was Dad first, and then it was Daddy second. And then I, and then I asked the third time. I was like, Father, please help me right now. Please. I cannot, I cannot see, I cannot. See, I cannot see. I don't feel anything of love here in this darkness. And it was just dark. It was just dark. I couldn't see anything. And I woke up after the week and two days. My mom's beautiful numbers could fight with me. But after a week and two days, I woke up and, um, I believe she prayed for me after she passed away from Jesus Christ's love and all my friends and families here. I, I, I don't even have them all the way close to me. My families have been separated from me because um, we all have been through witchcraft, but we're still royal holiness through our Father God. And um, I woke up after the week and two days and I couldn't even see still. They were feeding me like um, beautiful, the doctors were feeding me beautiful, beautiful, holy royalty. My father's, my father God's royal holiness is food. Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> and uh, I couldn't even see while they were feeding me. And I was on like a, I was on tubes and um, it was on my, it was on my left side to keep me alive. The water was keeping me alive. It's what it's giving to us is water from our Father God. We have water on the moon, we have water on earth, <laughs> and everywhere else. And um, he gave me water, and the doctor said, and she was, she was like, Doctor, you have to give him water, or else he'll die. We need my go, Archangel. <laughs> His mother told me that right now. <laughs> And uh, my mom told me that it's the truth, Johnny. It's the truth. I did pray for you. And, and yes, you have, to, you have to say it louder. My mom prayed for me. My mother prayed for me. And then the lady was telling the doctor, give him the water or else he'll, he'll pass away and he'll, he'll, he won't be here with us anymore. We need him still on earth to protect us and all our children. Please, listen to me now, or else he will pass away, God forbid. 
And then the doctor understood. He was like, okay, I understand, Claudia. I understand, young lady. And she was like, he was, she was actually telling herself that I'll protect another daughter of holy, my, my father God of holiness. My mom, Claudia, was telling that to Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ was telling that to my father. I mean, Jesus Christ was telling that to my mother, excuse me. And then the doctors came up to me, and I was, I was dead still. Like, like, I felt like I was dead inside, like evanescence, because I couldn't see, I couldn't feel, I couldn't see anything. I was like uh, Dancing with the Devil by Dim the Bottle. And um, that's why she sung it when, um, after my mom passed away, she sung that song because she knew it was coming before I would have ever known. I haven't met Demi Lovato yet physically, but spiritually, I know that she made that song. Like a lot of artists, like Ariana Grande, I, I truly adore. And um, I adore them all beautiful women around the world that protect me and all beautiful men's, men's, <laughs> just beautiful men that protect me. <laughs> and they fed me water finally and then I, um, I apologize everyone, but um, after they fed me water, they were feeding me like nice apple sauces and like uh, beautiful apple juice and orange and they were like, please, we need the orange juice. He needs vitamin C because I wasn't taking my Bictarvi, which is HIV. My HIV medication is Bictarvi I was taking and I wasn't taking it before the hospital visit. And that was like weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and I almost passed away. My, my little dog almost passed away, um, but he did not. His name was a little bit. And, he was covered by my best friend, too, as well. Um, his name is Mr. Daniel Graves. Have you met him before? I'm not sure I've met Daniel. I may okay. have, I don't know. Um, he used to be the young man with glasses, and he was very like a, I call him, Daniel, you're not fat, you're a thicky. When he would call himself like that, you know, he'd be like, I just can't eat right now because I don't want to be too fat. So I was like, you're, you're a king, you're not that. You are loved, and you are a king and loved by me. So um, you're not that word fat. You are thick, and you are gorgeous, young and beautiful king. You are, and um, he took care of my little bit. My little, little bit was a little like almost like a poodle. He was actually mixed with, I believe, poodle. Yeah, he was. Daniel Graves just told me that spiritually, but um. My, my dog, my beautiful God, dog, dog spelled backwards is God, and God spelled backwards is dog. And my beautiful little bit, that young man, was saved by Daniel Graves. Cause when he told my manager, Mr. Daniel Graves, my king, Daniel Graves, my best friend, which, excuse me, my best friend who makes his himself make me know that he's my truest best friend. He saved my little bit. When he checked, he said he thought I was dead too as well. He thought I was dead inside with a little bit. And um, he asked the manager, can you please do me a favor? In this emergency, I really need to get to Jonathan and Michael Gordado's room because he thought I was dead. We were both dead. <laughs> um, I was sad spiritually, um, searching for someone to help me in the streets while I was doing drugs, looking for drugs, helping myself find a friend. I left my best friend behind, um, my little dog. Um, and there was no more water. <laughs> Ew, and it's in this bowl. Yeah, I used to have a big bowl, a beautiful, silver bowl for him. I used to keep water in there for him, fresh water in there. I would always feed him beautiful, good foods that we would get from the refreshing 
right there on six in town, town and six. Jonathan, I'm, yes? I'm going to let you, I think this might be a little too emotional for you, so maybe we'll do this another time. Thank you. Yes, that's fine with me. Thank, thank you. you for sharing everything. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for telling us about all your thank you, sir. and everything else. Thank you, sir. King Mark, thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you.